What's up everyone? I hope all of you are doing well and keeping safe in the comfort of your home. Uh, today we're going to do something slightly different. Most of the time we cover the latest launches in tech uh, like the 5600 XT or the latest Threadripper CPUs. But in this episode, we're going to get our hands dirty and take a deep dive into building your very own NAS. Yep, you heard us right. We're going to show you how to build your own NAS on the cheap. Now, what exactly is a NAS? What is it used for? Do I need one? These are some of the questions we're going to answer in the next few minutes. Now, some of you may have heard the term NAS before. It stands for Network Attached Storage. Uh, and many of us use it both professionally and at home as well. It allows files to be stored on disk drives that can be accessed over the network, uh, either over Ethernet or wirelessly. Having a NAS setup greatly increases productivity with important files now available in a single location to anyone who has access to it. Uh, this is without having the need to save it separately on every single device. So you can say goodbye to the hassle of plugging in and out USB sticks uh, for sharing files. It's also great for storing photos, videos and movies that you can access over devices such as your phone or smart TV, uh, especially with applications like Plex installed. A NAS has other great features like private cloud storage, data backup and data protection to name a few. So we highly recommend getting one today. You can build your very own uh, like what we're about to cover or simply purchase a reputable NAS from brands like Synology, D-Link or QNAP. Now the branded ones are extremely easy to configure and set up but can be costly uh, depending on which model you buy. In today's video, we show you how easy it is to scavenge an old computer and build your very own storage device. So the custom NAS we are building today revolves around FreeNAS, uh, an open source, free to use software built on top of Linux uh, that's perfect for DIY builds. It has high end NAS features built into it and is much much more than just a simple file storage solution. It makes full use of ZFS, an open source file system, and handles RAID and manages volumes beautifully as well. Like we mentioned before, FreeNAS supports a wide variety of third-party apps, such as BitTorrent, uh, if you're a Mac user, Transmission, Plex Media Server, and more. I personally use my NAS to store photos of Caesar, my dog, as well as other important photos and documents. Before we jump in, I have to stress that a standalone NAS isn't considered a backup even though most people would consider it one. A NAS that has been configured for redundancy like stripe drives, mirrored drives or even a disk array with two parity drives only provide redundancy and business continuity in the event of drive failures. Now this allows you time to quickly run out and purchase a new drive if one of your hard drives fail uh, to rebuild your volume and rectify your disk issues. Your data is never fully safe in a single location, so a backup is really only considered a backup if you have a full, secure copy of your data in a separate place altogether. Put things in perspective, large corporations have backups kept across state lines to ensure data is always replicated and up to date in the event of catastrophic disasters like earthquakes and floods. In the context of Singapore, Big banks have their data centers in places such as Ayaraja as well as Changi with full data replication happening between the two sites. Always back up your data, people. The hardware requirements to run FreeNAS isn't high at all. All you need is a USB stick, an Intel-based system, well, AMD works well too, but Intel is generally recommended. Uh, with an operating system drive, which is preferably an SSD, at least eight gigs of memory, and of course, the storage drives themselves. You also need a power supply and a case to put it all in. Now this makes it extremely easy to repurpose an old PC or buy cheap secondhand components on Carousel for your very own NAS. If you'd like to see us put together uh, PC components directly bought on Carousel, let us know in the comments below. Okay, now that we've got everything together, let's take a look at our sponsors. Uh, this video is brought to you by Seagate as well as Silverstone. Seagate has kindly sent us four of the Stella Iron Wolf NAS drives that are perfect for home, small office, home office, and small business use. They come in a range of capacities, and the one we have today uh, is a whopping 16 terabytes each. That's thousands of movies or millions of MP3s. Basically, that's more storage than you or I will ever likely need. Uh, the drives deliver up to 7200 RPM spin speed, along with sustained data rates of up to 210 megabytes per second, making this one of the faster HDDs we've come across. You can be assured your data will be secure and stable with the Iron Wheels drives with its three-year product and 180 terabytes a year workload limit. Now, Silverstone has also sent us the NAS-oriented CS380. It's an eight-bay compact NAS tower that's perfect for what we're gonna do today. While it seems like an ordinary PC tower case, its true defining feature 
is its 8 hot swappable 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch SATA drives with built-in backplane allowing us to replace faulty drives extremely easily while we'll cover the full build in part 2 of this video. Let's get to building the PC. Okay, so just head on down to freeness.org uh, and once you hit enter, you'll be greeted with uh, a page where you can click download in the center of it. So when you're here, you can see a newsletter. So all this means is that if you want to sign up for the latest news and features that our Freeness offers, you can go ahead and fill up your details. If not, you can also click the bottom link where you can bypass this completely and just skip right on to the downloads page. So once you're at the downloads page, um, you will see some other links and basically you can go through the full hardware requirement of Freeness like we went through before this. The system requirements aren't high at all and you can see the minimum hardware requirements clearly written there together with its recommended minimum hardware. All it needs is a Windows 64-bit processor, which we already have uh, an Intel, um, also 8 gigs of RAM and some storage. Okay, so once that is done, go ahead and download the ISO. Okay, so once uh, Freeness is downloaded, we have to get it onto a bootable USB and that's by Rufus. So just head on to Rufus, download the, uh, the EXE file and run the EXE file. You can see we already have a 16 gig thumb drive uh, plugged in and we're going to now select the ISO that we've downloaded earlier. So once everything is ordered, just leave it on default and you can click on start. This will erase all the information on the thumb drive and begin uh, writing into your bootable USB. Okay, and now we're done. So once you're done with the bootable drive, just plug it into your PC that we built um, earlier and we're going to boot it off the thumb drive that we just created. Okay, once done, just click on install um, and then you can see that we have that Seagate SSD in. Click on yes and proceed with the installation. Uh, you can enter a root password here, but if you don't want to decide now, when you get to the GUI of Freeness, you can configure uh, a password then. So you can just click on OK or cancel. We're going to click on cancel here. Okay, and Freenas can be booted either in BIOS or UEFI mode, and we're going to choose UEFI. So once you've uh, clicked on that, it's going to go through its installation phase. We'll sped it up a bit, uh, and there you have it. Freenas is installed successfully. So it's going to ask you to reboot and remove the installation media, which we're going to do now, and quickly reboot into Freenas OS itself. Once it goes through its loading setup, um, you will see some options for you to configure your network. So this is one of the more um, important aspects and you, you actually don't need a lot of networking experience, but uh, it's good to know what IP address you're going to configure your FreeNAS to be. Here, configure our IPv4 address. You can leave the interface name blank, you don't need this, um, and just proceed directly to getting your IP address set. So here we've set uh, IP address to be 192.168.1.69 uh, and the IPv4 net mask as 255.255.255.0. You don't have to configure IPv6 and once you're there, just click OK and there you have it. Um, you have configured your direct access to your Freenas GUI. Okay, so once you're done and that has been set up, you can actually access uh, the Freeness GUI via the IP you have set previously, which is uh, 192.168.1.69. So once you're, you're there, you can basically create the uh, root username as well as root password. So we've done this previously, so we're not going to do anything here. 
And once you're in, you can see some system information, your CPU load, as well as your interface you're connected to, and system memory as well. And you can see a couple of things and go through some of the features that Freenas has, but generally speaking, you should be able to leave uh, most of these things on the default setting. Okay, so the, the thing that we're going to be focusing on is the storage pool and we're going to create our very first storage pool. So just click on create pool and you can see the four 16 terabyte drives that we've installed previously. So it's going to say, it's not going to say 16 terabytes because the usable space of the drive isn't a full uh, marketed capacity. So we can see here 14.55 uh, terabytes. So add all the all the drives to the right hand side of things and then you can name your pool and create your pool. So before we create our pool, we're going to select uh, the, the sort of the RAID uh, configuration that we want and we're going to choose um, RAID Z1. So this basically is similar to RAID 5 where you have one this redundancy. Just click on create and it will wipe all the data on the disk to create the pool. There you have it. You can see that you've just uh, created a healthy pool with a whopping 40 over terabytes of drive space. And once you created a pool, the next thing you're going to want to do is to create shares and folders for people to access. Uh, you won't be able to directly access a pool until you've done this. So uh, that's what we're going to do next. So I'm just going to create a, a share called Dream Share and allow guest access for anyone in the network, uh, anyone on the network to be able to access any files on it without requiring a, a username and password. Just go with the default options and click enable service. So once that is done, um, just go to map network drive and you'll be able to put in the IP address of the the NAS, which is uh, 192.168.1.69, as well as the share name. Um, another option is you can just type in the IP address and click browse to see what, what is available. So now I'm going to map the network drive uh, so I can easily access it. And voila, you can see um, I can already create folders and um, put documents and data in there. Okay, so now we're going to do a simple uh, file transfer test. We're going to drag this 7 gigabyte file over into the NAS from our local storage. Uh, and again, you can see it's pushing 100 over Mbps, which fits in nicely with the performance of both the NAS as well as the Ethernet speed limit. As you can tell, it's extremely easy to put together a NAS and we've shown you how. It's also extremely cheap to do so if you have a spare PC lying around. You don't need anything high powered and having a NAS greatly improves your Soho and content consumption experience. Now the core of every NAS boils down to reliability and stability of the disk drives themselves. And I can't recommend Seagate Ironwolf drives enough. They have the perfect balance of cost, reliability and speed, making them our top choice for your future NAS whether you go the DIY route or buy one off the shelf. With that, we'll come to the end of this video. We hope we've inspired some of you to recycle your old PC parts and turn it into something that will greatly improve your workflow. If you like what you've learned today, give us a thumbs and subs for more content like this. Uh, stay home, be safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Show